Welcome back viewers and subscribers to another JCP video. This is part one of a two part series to water cooling. I'm just going to do an introduction and some tips and tricks to water cooling. This is going to be a very in-depth look at water cooling as uh, most people who do these tutorials only put together a certain type of water cooling kit in front of you. And my viewers and subscribers ask common questions like, I'm viewing or I'm trying to search for all these different parts and I don't understand what sizes or what what inner and outer diameter tubing this is and what type of threads there's so many different fractions and sizes of things that they don't understand they get confused and overwhelmed and they think it's this big task when it really isn't water cooling is very simple and today I'm gonna give you different sizes and stuff like that what goes with what just so you can get a better picture and understanding of what water cooling is and how easy it really is what we're going to start with first off is radiators. I'm going to show you some different types of sizes for uh, radiators. Of course, this is a 360 millimeter radiator just for reference. There are two sizes of fans that you can get radiators in, which is 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter. The sizing for radiators basically goes depending on how big compared to or how many fans that radiator will fit. So, of course, this is a 360 millimeter uh, radiator. It fits three times 120 millimeter fans. This is a 120 millimeter fan. It fits three of these on either side. So, of course, 120 times three equals 360. They come in 140, 240, 360, and then they come in a big 480. Um, basically, 140 works the same way. 140 multiplied by two, three, and four. Now, this is a very thick uh, radiator. If you're looking for, uh, if you need a lot of cooling, basically, you need to see how thick the radiator is too. Um, I think this is the thickest uh, RS360 uh, RS from XSPC, of course that's upside down, from XSPC, um, this is the thickest it comes in, this is a very thick radiator, I think it's 90 millimeter, um, you typically see them from 30 to 40, 50 maybe even, um, this is for more heavy duty your jobs, if you have a uh, CPU and a GPU looped all in one, uh, this is typically what you would get. Moving on from there, you have your uh, water blocks. Basically, you need to get the water block that fits uh, your type of CPU. Um, this is for an 1155. Uh, this cools my 2600K rig. Uh, this is the low flow block from uh, EK. Honestly, the difference between low flow and high flow is nothing. I'm pretty sure it's the same as that block. Maybe the high flow has a little bit thinner cut channels, but you honestly see no difference in uh, performance. You have your inlet and you have your outlet. It will, uh, the cool water will go into your inlet, run through the channels, dissipate the heat, and come out your outlet. Now, this comes with a back plate, so you will have to install a back plate on your motherboard. And uh, there's screws and some springs that will, uh, tension springs that will keep the uh, water block pushed onto your CPU. Make sure you still are using thermal grease on your CPU for contact. Um, GPU water blocks work the same as that way. GPU water blocks will come with uh, pads for the VRAM, etc. And you'll fit the pads depending on where they are. Uh, they'll be pre-cut or you may have to cut them yourself. So you typically don't see those anymore where you have to cut, you, cut them yourselves, but you might run into them. Um, moving on from there, you have your different size fittings. All fittings use a general size thread, which is a G1 fourth thread. Um, from there, the only thing you need to choose is what size diameter, inner, inner diameter, which is ID technical term, inner diameter you have to choose what size you want. Like in my rig, I use one half inch inner diameter tubing. You have different sizes such as one half inner diameter, three eighths inner diameter, and uh, there's even random rare ones that are seven sixteenths inner diameter. Now, from there, basically all you would do is you would get the same size tubing inner diameter as you would the diameter of your uh, nipples on your fittings. Um, you have different angles, of course, for riding your uh, water cooling uh, loop, tidier and cleaner. Um, this is just a regular straight fitting. You have a 90 degree. Now, these are rotary fittings from Bits Power. Um, basically, what it means is it will turn after you screw it in. It will turn around in its, uh, in its socket. So again, this is 90 millimeter. This is a uh, 30, and this is 45. These are two 45s. Um, pretty much I have common questions of how do you mount the fans onto the radiator. Now they come with special 
size screws. They're longer screws and basically all you would do is you would put the fan on the radiator and you would insert the screw into the hole and uh, you would tie it down you know through the top of the fan. Um, if you're mounting fans in between a case and the radiator uh, basically all you do is you would put the fans on the inside of the case and then you would squeeze them or pinch them together like a sandwich with the radiator and put the screws or the bolts through the back side of the case and hold everything together and you'll pinch the case and the fans in between the screw and the radiator. Um, your clamps here basically these are just reusable regular clamps you have different kinds um, you can use metal clamps, plastic clamps, honestly these are the cheapest ones they work perfectly but they aren't the greatest looking um, I would recommend metal clamps, metal re reusable clamps of course if you would want a clampless looking uh, rig with a, uh, or a loop basically you could use compression fittings which basically uh, the compression fittings uh, fit the tube and it holds it in place without any leaks etc and uh, it looks like there's pretty much nothing there you have your standard tubing here I think this is uh, 3 8 size tubing this doesn't go with my fittings this is just what I had laying around I just wanted to show you guys um, they come in sale by the foot basically in my rig I used I think even 6 foot it doesn't look like I use that much but you honestly you need to get extra make sure you plan to get extra because you don't want to run out and find that you have to wait an extra, re uh, extra week to finish your rig just because you didn't buy enough Honestly, it it seems like you need less than you really do. Um, always buy extra. Now, reservoirs. I don't have a reservoir here laying with me, but uh, basically they come in different sizes and shapes and uh, features. They come in cylinder form. Basically, it's just one long cylinder with an inlet in the top and an outlet in the bottom. They come in things like uh, five and a quarter inch drive bay enclosures. Basically, it fits in your five and a half quarter in the front of your case. Um, they also come in just regular square boxes you can put in the bottom of your case. You can tuck them away. They come in many different shapes and sizes. Just, you know, whatever reservoir you like the look of, honestly, there's not going to be really that better performing than the next. As long as it holds water and or holds your coolant without uh, leaking, then you're perfectly fine. Um, pumps. Basically, when you're looking at pumps, you need to make sure that you are looking for how many liters of water it pushes per hour. Typically, the higher the better. Most people prefer D5 laying pumps. Um, that's most sought after pumps. But honestly, if you can find one with uh, good reviews and uh, you know pushes a good amount of water uh, per hour, then you you know you'll be fine from there. Just to go into better uh, alliteration of uh, how you should route your loop, um, basically you should have always have the coolest water running to the places you want to cool first. Don't have cool water running to your reservoir where it will sit, then go through your pump into your uh, water block, whichever one you're using for your GPU or CPU or, or both. What you should do is you should always route from the reservoir to the pump to the radiator to from the radiator to the block and then from the outlet of the block to your uh, reservoir then back to your pump and then to your radiator again and then again from cooling radiator to the inlet of your water block outlet to your reservoir that's the way you should always go the coolest water from the radiator should always go to your blocks first never route it anywhere else as it will get warm as it's going you know the, lo the longer it's sitting without going into your blocks um, that's just a little tip um, some people now I don't recommend this if you're a first time water cooler some people will use uh, with their fittings, they'll get a smaller size tubing, like say they'll get a 3 8 inch tubing and a half inch barb. What they'll do is they'll just uh, warm up the end of the tubing, they'll just grab it and warm it up with their hands real fast and they'll stick it over the, uh, the bigger nipple and they'll push it on there and just the tension from it being bigger and smaller will actually hold it in place, you won't get any leaks and you'll get uh, you know a clampless design. I don't recommend that if this is your first time water cooling, but it does work typically. Um, always flush out your radiator before using it. Make sure you test your test your uh, loop. Um, but again, this has been another JCP video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. Like, favorite, and subscribe, please. I have many of these videos coming out. And be looking for part two. This is Jesse from Jesse's Custom PCs, 